तो विनायक वेलकम टू द मॉक इंटरव्यू थैंक यू सर विनायक प्लीज टेल अस अबाउट योर सेल्फ योर एकेडमिक क्वालिफिकेशन योर वर्क एक्सपीरियंस इफ एनी एंड योर मेन हॉबीज post that i went to do my masters in energy systems and modeling in columbia university i did my masters for one and a half years after that i worked in the us for one year uh, at the national renewable energy lab as a researcher and for the last two years i have been preparing for the civil services uh, my hobbies include uh, watching tv series and getting in touch with with my friends so vinayak uh... coming to your state of uh, birth and your original domiciled state maharashtra so there is always a curiosity for everyone to know that consistently right from the first wave and now the possibility of the third wave maharashtra is always you know a hot spot for either uh incidents of beginning of covid infections and once you know it starts spreading it never ends so what do you think have been the reasons is it uh, historical or is it man made is it bad governance uh what what do you think are the main reasons give your views Uh, firstly, uh, Maharashtra. One major drawback is its unplanned government, uh, unplanned urbanization. Uh, so, if we see uh, cities like Mumbai and Pune, uh, a lot of slums have developed there. Uh, secondly, uh, with respect to Maharashtra, the ease of mobility and accessibility of uh, different cities uh, is another concern which leads to uh, spreading of the pandemic. and uh, thirdly sir uh, one positive point of maharashtra is that because of its good governance it is able to track these infections and it is able to up its uh, uh, tracking rate with respect to a public health care system uh, so that is one thing that puts it in the hot spot but that is uh, from my point of view a good thing that we are able to track the cases and manage them vinayak you have spent one year and you were a researcher in us the national yes. renewable energy laboratory now tell me what are the success stories of united states in the area of uh, renewable energy that you would like to pass on to in uh, to to india which can be emulated by india sir uh, firstly us is doing a great amount of progress with respect to biofuels and bioenergy uh, so that progress can be transformed to india because uh, this can help uh, get income for our farmers in one way or the other secondly sir uh, the uh, the modeling of the electric grids in us is something which we need to learn uh, we can adopt the unit commitment and economic dispatch model which the us adopts rather than going for the ppa based approach which uh, we have adopted and uh, thirdly sir it is uh, the coordination on a regional level rather than on a state level is something that india can learn from the us because coordinating on a regional level uh, and ensures better integration of renewables into the grid apart from that sir uh, one major thing we need to adopt is uh, interdisciplinary research uh, from the us with respect to renewable energy in india we have silo based institutions but having Uh, multiple uh, research organizations under a single umbrella can help india progress in its uh, renewable energy targets so tell me uh, vinayak uh, some of the signs and symptoms some five six symptoms that you see today in the last say fortnight or a month uh, which uh, shows that india's economy is on the revival path sir uh, if we see that fdi it has been constant or it has been increasing despite the pandemic levels uh, secondly sir uh, our stock markets are booming which uh, shows the a future faith in our uh, economy 
uh, and uh, thirdly sir uh, despite the pandemic uh, a lot of uh, industries as well as msmes they have uh, stood firm uh, uh, because of relaxation of the npa related uh, issues and i feel that that is a positive step uh, going forward that uh, the economy is resilient when i you hail from ahmednagar yes sir so ahmednagar you would certainly be knowing about the administrative reforms which were done in ahmednagar yes sir are you aware yes sir um uh, may i it's no i just need whether to know whether you know about uh, lakina uh, pattern yes, you know yes sir so tell me uh, lakina ji had done it almost 30 years ago now with the digital age what kind of services through e governance can you think of what mr lakina did you know in that time what you think you can do if you were the district collector of a district through e governance and what kind of services can you offer and how sir um the um, lakina pattern uh, it has been transformed into a digital age through the use of cloud servers uh, so that is a major advantage of that particular pattern with respect to the e governance uh, related service deliveries uh, i can think of uh, civil uh, registration systems with, uh, like uh, land titling etc uh, land titling and certifications can be done through the e governance mode Uh, secondly uh, banking services especially in the cooperative sector can also be done through the e governance board and uh, sir uh, we see that pensions of uh, retired personnel they have to be present every time they have to get a pension so those things can also be served through the e governance board and finally sir uh, with the pandemic uh, we can also ensure that telemedicine is taken to the uh, panchayati level institutions uh, so that uh, expert advice can be uh, benefited through the e governance so when i uh, i pass on to mr khanna for the next round of questions thank you sir good morning vinayak good morning sir uh, vinayak you <coughs> you have taken up mathematics semi mechanical engineering research so very interesting uh, depth for thank you sir discussion now research there are two types of research one is a web based research which is more prevalent these days versus the research which is conventional the library book uh, reference research which yes. one you think is more reliable and um, which one would uh, have you adopted in your research program yes, sir uh, with respect to what i adopted most was the web based research because uh, a lot of articles uh, a lot of research publications are mostly available online uh, so that is more convenient with respect to uh, using the computers uh, to get what we exactly need but i feel uh, also that uh, traditional based research or the conventional research uh, is also important for different sectors for example national archives uh for example the policies which have been made uh, previously most of them exist as uh, in the in the book form in the hard copy form so i feel that that is also an important aspect but it depends on what kind of research you are actually doing if it is more of on on a modern topic then it will be related to web web based research and if it is on a traditional topic or uh, orientology uh, etc that it will be a traditional research do you think this new education policy 2020 has done enough to promote research uh, in india especially in the uh, higher educational institutions sir uh, we can see nep as a start for uh, initiating a research ecosystem in india so uh, given that it is definite uh, the uh, the steps taken by nep are definitely good with respect to three tier organization uh, having a separate regulatory and financing mechanism for research so i feel that we can build up on this uh, by 2030 we can have maybe a review of the education policy to further enhance our research okay you are a mechanical engineer tell me what is the job of a 
quality analyst and give me one scenario uh, in which uh, you can describe the role of a quality analyst sir the role of quality analyst is, is to basically ensure that uh, all the due procedures have been followed and the product which is developed it is in um, uh, it has uh, the same uh, things that which have been actually proposed by the company uh, so with respect to a uh, quality analyst uh, we can see that a quality analyst in an automobile engineering will ensure that the quality test related to uh, uh, the crash test the brake test etc are performed with a uh, due procedure and they have the due results which are to be needed for uh, uh, passing that particular quality test what is innovation and what is being done to promote innovation in india sir innovation refers to use of uh, like development of new technologies or use of existing technologies uh, to get a particular thing done in a more efficient manner and uh, to promote innovation in india Uh, we have numerous uh, approaches for example industry academia collaborations are being promoted secondly we have incubation to promoted in different parts of the country and then uh, initiatives like uh, startup india stand up india are also promoting innovations on a startup level any any flagship scheme that government of india has launched on innovation innovation i'm not mission. able to take calls the so, digital india mission can yes no thank you sir. there is an innovation mission so see what is that innovation mission okay sir i'll look into it thank you sir okay uh, uh, tell me china's growing influence has led to change in the world world order is it true if so what is this a uh, change in the world order due to growing influence of china sir it is true to a certain extent that growing china has resulted in a change in the world order and this can be seen from uh, uh, the reactions of the west to uh, to the rise of china for example uh, us has uh, started a grouping called quad in which india is an active member then uh, uh, there has been um, uh, actions against uh, companies like huawei who are uh, in the 5g sector and uh, they have been um, accused of uh, doing back channel talks with china by providing them data uh, so uh, there are also instances with respect to uh, the global multilateral organizations like who has uh, tried to get uh, initiatives with respect to tracing the source of covid so these are the initiatives which are taking place but i feel that the world is much more multipolar uh, than what it was in 1991 and so rise of a single country is not going to change the world equation on a major scale which is one equation in mathematics that you like the most and why sir um, i i like the equation that zero factorial is equals to 1 uh, the most uh, because uh, sir it tries to help us uh, in actually getting uh, the definition of what a particular uh, thing means uh, for example most of the uh, people say that zero factorial equals to 1 uh, because of the fact that it is basically a rule of law but if we understand what is what a factorial is that it is the number of combinations in which positive integers less than a particular number can be arranged and then if we think in that way then zero factorial equals to one gives us a very interesting um, kind of a, a thing to uh, ponder about uh, what is the i'll i'll give you one quick sequence and tell me what is the sum s is equal to 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 now is there one answer or there are more than one answers to this equation you got the sequence sir uh, s is equal yes, to plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 up to infinity yes sir so how so many this, answers sir, uh, are there to this sequence yes sir sir uh, there are two answers to this particular sequence uh, the uh, the answers are uh, zero if the number of terms are even and it is uh, Uh, one if the number of terms are odd 
no sequence is infinite sequence is infinite 1 minus 1 plus 1 and there are two ways in which you can add it up so i want to know both the answers i'm sorry sir like okay. from my knowledge i would just say that uh, if you have 1 minus 1 it will be 0 uh, and uh, if it is 1 minus 1 plus 1 it will be 1 so with respect to the number of terms even if, uh, if these terms tend to infinity it will be 1 upon 2 because 1 minus s and you bring s on this side so s is equal to 1 upon 2 anyway you think about it thank you sir okay thank you sir uh, yes. right over to you mr sumesh thank you sir okay good morning vinayak good morning sir okay uh, you studied in us also in your introduction yes, sir so what exactly you did uh, so i did my masters in energy systems and modeling uh, it was a one and a half year program wherein i was working with respect to design of renewable energy systems and their integration okay so can you compare the major macro economic indicators of india with usa uh, as well as china sir uh, to start with the gdp uh, we are uh, the fifth largest gdp after the pandemic uh, whereas china is the second largest and us is the uh, largest uh, if we go with respect to gdp in terms of purchasing power parity then china goes on to be the top uh, us goes on to be the second and india comes on to be the third uh, so uh, that is something we need to take a look at um, thirdly sir uh, with respect to inflation uh, while uh, since india and china are developing countries the inflation in both these countries is uh, usually uh, around 5% uh, if uh, on the other hand if you go with respect to us it comes to around 1 or 2% um, finally sir uh, with respect to fdi we see that uh, fdi is more in uh, india and china uh, being developing countries and having uh, cheaper labor available as opposed to us because it is uh, one of the major originators of these fdis okay. uh, how do you see future of cryptocurrency sir uh, i see that cryptocurrency should continue on a private level but not uh, as a fiat currency uh, because if cryptocurrency continues as a fiat currency it will lead to multiple problems like uh, monetary policy related issues uh, then exchange rate issues and the volatility which it offers uh, will itself make it a dubious currency uh, but uh, continuing in the private sector it will help develop uh, better technologies like blockchain um and uh, distributed ledger systems which i feel that can be used in other sectors okay and i would like to know your views also on uh, current issue of retrospective tax sir uh, re, uh, yesterday the uh, lok sabha passed a bill with respect to uh, debarring uh, retrospective uh, taxation and i feel that that is a very positive step because that increases the certainty in a uh, in an environment and that is likely to bring more investors into india and uh, it is said that uh, retrospective taxation can lead to tax terrorism and it further uh, prevents the private sector from uh, planning in a uh, in a definite manner okay moving on uh, we have seen the farmers protesting uh, near delhi border uh, it has been more than one year so <laughs> Uh, give uh, any solution to address this issue and also since you are from maharashtra uh, how is the situation in maharashtra are the farmers agitated there also and why it is only in north uh, india that farmers are actually vehemently protesting yes sir so to answer your first question uh, with respect to what needs to be done to uh, basically uh, calm these protests is the farmers laws are uh, a 1991 movement in agriculture so we need to actually communicate that effectively to the farmers and we need to guarantee them and reduce their trust deficit that these laws are in favor of them and they they won't lead to uh, uh, basically swiping out of the apmcs 
so that is something if we if the government is able to do if the government is able to get in the stakeholders on a table and uh, effectively communicate i feel that the farmers will be in a much better position uh, with respect to uh, the condition in maharashtra sir farmers in maharashtra are not more uh, agitated because the apmcs are not the prominent procurers uh, they, they are not the pro prominent pro procurers of the farm produce in uh, maharashtra since uh, we have a cooperative sector especially in textile in uh, sugarcane uh, the, these cooperatives they uh, directly produce the major farm produce in maharashtra uh, so farmers in maharashtra are uh, relatively calm and uh, to answer the third question sir uh, uh, the apmcs in north they procure almost 85% to uh, 80 to 85% of the farmer produce and the farmers feel that uh, displacing the corporate sector would displace these uh, apmcs and would then control the market which would lead to a uh, reduction in prices uh, uh, for uh, the for the farm produce and that is the reason because of the trust deficit they are protesting okay one last question from my side uh, i would like to know the reason why you wish to join civil services sir the idea of joining civil services uh, came to me when i was working at the national renewable energy lab earlier as an intern and later as a full time employee and during this time i was working in close coordination with the us department of energy as well as india's ministry of power and the interactions with these civil servants uh, made me realize that uh, even if the researcher is doing research this gets actually implemented on the ground level by the civil servants and i feel that that role is much more prominent and we need people who can understand the research intricacies as well as who can act as a linchpin between the scientists and the politicians and that is something that uh, motivated me to come into uh, civil service okay i pass on to chairman sir thank you sir so vinayak uh, reserve bank of india has come out with its new monetary policy yesterday sir uh, the rbi has maintained its uh, repo rate at 4% and the reverse repo rate at 3.35% uh, so it uh, it has increased the inflation rating from 5.1% uh, to 5.7% uh, for this current financial year and it has also decided to reduce the liquidity uh, by uh, doing uh, transactions of of the order of 4 lakh crore uh, for a fortnight from september 24 so in the eyes of rbi on the basis of yesterday's monetary policy what does i mean can you draw a sketch of uh, what where indian economy is heading towards on the basis of rbi's you know the monetary policy highlights sir according to the rbi uh, the economy is headed in the right direction uh and hence it has tried to maintain the repo rates so that banks will be able to lend more to the private sector and it will basically ensure um a revival of the economy uh to uh, rbi has uh, maintained that the current inflation is mainly because of supply side disruptions which have been uh, because of the uh, uh, the localized lockdowns which have been taking place and uh, if we are able to increase the liquidity and if we are able to increase the demand Uh, RBI uh, says that India Indian economy is going to grow at around nine point five percent per year. Vinayak, uh, coming to Afghanistan, why uh, major countries, you know, of the world, all major majority of the countries rather, including India, they do not want Taliban to take over Afghanistan. Yes, sir. Sir, um, the fear is that uh, every like all these countries, they want uh, there to be a democratic process. Uh, there are different interests involved with respect to different countries, but the common interest lies with the fact that uh, the power assumption cannot be through the use of violence. It has to be through consensus and discussions. And secondly, uh, there is a fear that uh, with respect to if Taliban is in power, the future of Afghanistan will move towards its past. wherein uh, the constitutional values are not upheld there are human right violations 
and there are uh, vacuums which will be taken up by terrorist organizations so these are the fears because of which uh, like all the countries don't want taliban to uh, come into power in afghanistan so you think that some forces of belonging to different countries or sponsored by un should enter afghanistan again to fight the taliban sir uh, firstly we need to ensure that the afghan uh, forces they are effectively uh, strengthened and they are supported rather than having a, a different uh, force which is entering into uh, afghanistan and fighting the wars for them but uh, but uh, since india is currently the chair of un a decision can be made with respect to peacekeeping forces who uh, who basically retaliate only if there is uh, an action against them uh, rather than uh, having a force which is going to be actively involved in uh, the afghan threat but peace making force cannot throw out the taliban yes sir so that uh, like my first point was to strengthen the afghan forces and support them via aerial uh, motives or via any other uh, uh, like a provision of arms and uh, other things uh, but peace keeping forces will be just to ensure that the human right violations are not taking place and there is not a vacuum to be occupied by a terrorist organization so what support militarily can be offered by india to afghan forces yes sir sir uh, india has uh, basically helped in training of afghan forces in uh, previously uh, but in the like since the uh, current situation is urgent india can team up with uh, us and try to uh, see that if it can provide any sort of aerial support to prevent occupation of the provincial capitals which is currently done by pakistan uh, uh, by afghan taliban when i we have covered lot of subjects and areas now yes, i come to the last question but that question would be from a subject uh, which you will choose so we can um, uh, talk about india's electricity markets or india's electri- uh, electricity or power sector yeah, power sector okay so uh, tell me when i the electric vehicle revolution is on way you are a mechanical engineer uh there are fears about people involved in combustion engine uh, vehicles or petro vehicles whatever you call uh, to become jobless number 2 uh in terms of power consumption which will increase because of the evs uh the the carbon footprint will also go up so do you think that the kind of a, the revolutionary uh you know attitude or policy which uh, everyone including government has followed may not go well in the coming years as far as the electric vehicle revolution is concerned or maybe we may repent later sir um what i see uh, with respect to the electric vehicle policy uh, there is resistance to change in every sector uh, if we are to look into the environment so initially i feel that there will be a resistance because there will be a uh, loss of jobs as you mentioned but uh, electric vehicles is the future uh, as well as the green hydrogen vehicles uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are the future so we have to think from reskilling and upskilling the existing labor force which is involved in ic engines and they can be uh, uh, better able to contribute with respect to the electric vehicle scenario uh, secondly sir uh, as you mentioned that carbon footprint can go up uh, because power consumption will increase uh, with respect to the electric vehicles so what we need to do there uh, is a two folded scenario we need to ensure that the power which is consumed by these electric vehicles is green in that in the sense that it is either uh, produced from renewable energy sources and secondly we can more effectively be able to integrate electric vehicles if there is demand side management wherein the uh, electric vehicles are charged uh, during the day times because uh, the solar energy is available more during that time and they are uh, basically uh, they ensure that uh, the most of the power consumption is uh, on the green earth so when i we finish our interview now <laughs> Oh,
<clears throat> Vinayak, uh, I was yes. very happy to discuss with you number of issues. You you are good. You are knowledgeable. You have good personality. Uh, you had smile on your face, indicative of uh, more, uh, you know confidence level. So these are the positives. Now coming to the depth of uh, your knowledge, because that that is one one criteria that normally we see research based versus conventional uh, research. So when we compare these two, there is always an issue of authenticity and correctness. Because what you see on web may not be authentically uh, correct and what you see in libraries, there is a authority for you to quote. So the, the <clears throat> biggest difference when we compare the two researches is authenticity. So yes, which you did not mention. So since you are a research scholar, you did your research, it will be very important for you to know uh, <clears throat> this kind of, you know, when we compare. Yes. So that is Thank why you. you you did conclude by saying that conventional is still more reliable because it is uh, based on <clears throat> books. But then uh, web-based gives you far bigger uh, material, but not the authenticity at times. Yes, sir. So that was one correction I wanted to make. Then I asked you two questions, much and one. What is the job of quality analyst? And uh, can you give one scenario to describe this job? So you forgot to mention the scenario. You could have sir, picked uh... up yeah, tell me. Uh, sir, I mentioned about uh, the quality analyst in an automobile sector with respect to the crash test and the uh, brake test. Oh, oh, maybe I, I have not jotted down, I just missed it. Then, uh, then it's fine because that scenario is very important that uh, how he will develop, support, plan, design, and execute. So, all these five things uh, uh, to be checked. Then, uh, growing influence of China in changing groupings and uh, word order. Did you take the name of uh, Pakistan and uh, our neighbors uh, who are more inclined towards China with respect to his China's... Uh, no. So I think those, those are the yes. new groupings that are getting formed. Yes. And uh, this is what I thought uh, is very important to mention when we talk of groupings. So India yes. has to work really hard to have its neighborhood first policy because China is trying to uh, so these these are the things that should uh, come in your reply. Yes. Sir. So yes. Uh, one one suggestion you you if you know the subject so well, take a pause, then uh, you know you will be able to cover up all the items. Yes. Then there is this Atal Innovation Mission, which is a flagship yes, scheme of Government of India. So the question of what is innovation will be followed by the supplementary. Yes. So read up on Atal Innovation Mission. Thank you, sir. And uh, you... Other than this, uh, like mathematics, you talked of zero factorial is equal to one. Fair enough, so long as you are able to justify why according to you, then there is a Euclid equation, which is called God's equation, containing all the five elements of mathematics. So think of that. And this, see for yourself, the infinite sum has got two answers. So the question doesn't end there. Question is, as a mathematician, can you find the fallacy? How can a sequence have two different sums? Okay, so that, that was it. So these are a few minor uh, suggestions and corrections. Go a little more into depth. Take a pause before you reply. Uh, time management was very good. You were uh, confining to, uh, you know, time 
uh, of two minutes. That's it. I think uh, I I didn't ask you more. So that is uh, uh, what I had to say. So wish you all the best. Uh, Thank you very much. Okay, Vinay. Over to yes. you, Vinod. Yeah. Thank you, Vinay sir. So Vinay, a uh, few things from my side as well. Uh, uh, of course, to to build your confidence even more. I mean, I would say that your I was very impressed with your interview, with your performance today. Thank you. Uh, everything good uh, in terms of your personality, uh, confident. You were fielding the questions very well. You were good and fluent in communication. A little bit, you were fast. I will comment on this a bit later, but uh, well informed, uh, very analytical, uh, balanced personality, not the kind of extreme, no extremity uh, as such. So uh, overall on personality, uh, just one point that uh, you need to uh, wait a bit, you know, in, in, in answering your questions, you are a bit too in a hurry to answer and try to get into a conversation mode. Okay. okay. The idea is basically uh, to talk and discuss, you know, yes, and uh, should, should not be, should not look to be a question answer session. Yes, because okay. the entire thing, uh, uh, Vinayak, is not to test your knowledge. It is basically yes, to test your personality, how you have, you are taking up the questions. Questions is just a medium to test your personality. There is no better way to test. You know, you, you can't conduct uh, personality psychological tests on the candidates. So the yes, only okay. way out is to test through. So, give a lot of weightage to how you perform rather than what you perform. Okay. Okay. So, nothing wrong as such. I mean, I have already given you a, a, you know, 10 upon 10 on your personality part. I'm just hinting at uh, two things which way you need to improve. I know that your speech the speed that you were, you were pursuing, you it may not be very easy for you to bring it down. You know? So do some practicing. And basically the idea is that, you know, all every word of yours should be uh, understood, heard and understood by the... And secondly, you know, you, as I had mentioned, a bit of a hurry in a hurry to answer. So that is a sign of somebody who is very sincere, you know, and has a lot of knowledge. So he cannot wait. <laughs> so you seem to be that kind of personality. So you will have to wait. Yes, sir. Right? I, I hope I have been able to uh, yes, convey sir. my message. Yes, sir. You know, because th these comments are very important. You should not, you should understand what I actually meant and yes, not sir. otherwise. So yes, maybe with rehearsals, with practices, you know, you could do it. So it's only basically speed to the extent that the listener should be able to understand each word of yours and, okay. and, hear. and number two, in a hurry, you know, it can be bad on both sides. One is that the moment the question is asked, you start immediately. There's no problem in starting immediately. But if you want to structure your answer, you can pause for a few seconds. Now, for instance, like Ahmed Nagar thing, which I asked you, uh, Vinay, is a short, short question from you, for you. Yes. You know, not too many people from Ahmed Nagar will walk into the interview board. Yes, sir. So, and all the people who are sitting there in the interview board, they are of Lakina era. <laughs> yes, sir. Good point. So, yes, sir. all retired people. So, they will immediately be excited about asking Ahmed Nagar Yes, sir. So, they may, so, you should be very well prepared. 
Now, I did not ask the basics of the Lakina model because it's an age old. Why should you discuss in modern world? So I related it with the, now you have to restrict the e-governance to the extent of district administration and not take it beyond that. Okay. Telemedicine is not part of Lakina model. Yes. Lakina gave a single window. It was not a window for taking uh, medical care also. So it was a window for activities related to the district administration only. Yes. So you can't, you can't bring, uh, you know, health, you can't bring education. It was not so not for education. It was basically for people who come to collectorate yes. for their various works related to the collectorate. So you have to be very specific in picking up the activities. Now, what happens is collected, you can always read what does the district do. Now, car certificates, right? Domicile yes. certificates, land records, permissions for land, and all related things related to permissions from the district administration. Even permission for rallies and you know, like I'm, there can be so many, but you have to yes, just pick up, pick up five, six where people are involved, ration cards. Yes, you know? So you must, idea basically, I have mentioned district, I mentioned the Kina, and then I converted into e-governance. Now e-governance, you should not take it as a, you know, complete e-governance model, you know, involving everything that e-governance does, only to a district, only to what Lakina did, right? Yes. So this, you have to structure your answer accordingly. Yes. And for that, you know, as I was suggesting, if you need to think for two, three, four, five seconds, it will do good for you. And secondly, the hurry with which you answer, you know, it becomes slightly uh, it, does, it is not so impressive, you know, which it will be if you just, you know, like when you, when a question is asked and you think for two seconds and then you answer, you know, it will also give you, give the impression to the board that Vinayak has processed this question, thought about it and then answering. Yes, sir. It would also not look as if, you know, aap rata hua bol rahe, you know, rata hua. Hmm. Yes, sir. So this is just one suggestion that which we thought we'd give you and uh, rest is all fine. So mainly your delivery uh, is the issue and uh, I would suggest to you that your knowledge is excellent. You know everything. Economics, excellent. International relations, excellent. Some of the points which Mr. Khanna has mentioned, please uh, do, uh, you know, uh, do something about it. And what I'm going to suggest is your DAF matters need to be, you know, brushed up and go into the depth. So this Ahmednagar was also a part of your DAF. Yes, Mathematic sir. questions were also a part of your DAF. Maharashtra, that question, the first question that I asked was also from DAF. Yes, sir. Electrical. So just see what questions are emerging out of your depth and emerging into current affairs also, emerging into policy matters, emerging into government actions, emerging into economy, emerging into pandemic, right? So everything Maharashtra related, Pune related, Pune itself can be a very potential, you know, area for asking questions. So just prepare on that and uh, you have done exceedingly well. We have given you a Vinayak 64% for your performance. Yes. From our standard is very good, but we have also given up to 70. Okay. Just yes. to give you an idea key, there is a scope. Within our board, there is a scope. And then beyond 70 also, nobody can stop in case you do well. Yes. Okay. So any question Vinayak now you have from us. Sir, um, I just wanted to ask with respect to the delivery part, is it okay to uh, stop for like three to four seconds for every question or? Uh... 
not necessarily don't make it a habit okay it should not look as if you know you are always like in one candidate it so happen and i commented on that you know he or she i don't know who she would give 5 seconds for every quiz don't do it as a routine it cannot happen as a rule now especially suppose if i asked you a supplementary question so you think india should uh, send its forces into taliban into afghanistan now you are clicking 1 2 3 4 5 and then you answering no sir i don't think so now it is only a corollary of the earlier question yes so don't make it a rule yes sir in questions where your views are taken you can and you should give some initial pause that also with a purpose otherwise be natural yes you know if you pause you are not in the habit of pausing and zabardasti ki wo kaha gaya tha ki wo you pause for 3 4 seconds so as a rule don't do that yes. i would suggest whenever there are questions suppose i ask you about ahmednagar the e governance now this is where pausing initially will help you also yes. so pause where it helps you yes. and otherwise as far as speech is concerned just slow down a bit do some practice so okay. slow down your delivery you know just fraction of uh, you know your speed otherwise yes. it's fast otherwise it is good okay okay any other question no that should fix the problem so when i when is your interview uh 16th of september oh so you have time yes. you brush up your knowledge more about daf jot down some questions emerging from your daf yes you know so that at that point in time your answer can be very structured also yes and all the best vinayak thank you sir thank you everyone all the best vinayak all the best thank you sir thank you